Now let's talk about how teams respond to incidents using incident response plans. When an incident occurs, incident response teams must be prepared to respond quickly, efficiently, and effectively. Whether it's a data breach, DDoS attack, or ransomware, incidents have the potential to cause significant damage to an organization. Like we previously mentioned, regulations may require organizations to report incidents within a certain time frame. So it's crucial for organizations to have a formal incident response plan in place so there's a prepared and consistent process to quickly respond to incidents once they occur. You may remember learning that security plans consist of three basic elements, policies, standards, and procedures. An incident response plan is a document that outlines the procedures to take in each step of incident response. Response plans, just like response teams, are not all the same. Organizations tailor their plans to meet their unique requirements, such as their mission, size, culture, industry, and structure. For example, smaller organizations may choose to include their incident response plan in their security plan, while others may choose to have them as separate documents. Although not all incident plans are the same, there are common elements that they share. Incident plans have incident response procedures. These are step-by-step -step instructions on how to respond to incidents. System information. These are things like network diagrams, data flow diagrams, logging, and asset inventory information. And other documents like contact lists, forms, and templates. Plans aren't perfect, and there's always room to adjust and improve as incidents occur. Incident processes and procedures must be regularly reviewed and tested. This can be done through exercises like tabletops or simulations. These exercises ensure that all team members are familiar with the response plan. They also allow organizations to identify any missing gaps in a process to improve their incident response plan. Also, organizations may be required to complete specific types of exercises for regulatory reasons. Coming up, we'll discuss the different types of tools used in incident response. As a security analyst, you'll play an important role in incident detection. After all, you're going to be at the front lines actively detecting threats. To do this, you'll not only rely on the security knowledge you've developed so far, but you'll also be using a variety of tools and technologies to support your investigations. A great carpenter doesn't just use a hammer to create a piece of furniture. They rely on a variety of tools in their toolbox to get the job done. They'll need to use a tape measure to measure dimensions, a saw to cut wood, and sandpaper to smooth the surface. Likewise, as a security analyst, you won't be using a single tool to monitor, detect, and analyze events. You'll use detection and management tools to monitor system activity to identify events that require investigation. You'll use documentation tools to collect and compile evidence, and you'll also use different investigative tools for analyzing these events, like packet sniffers, New security technologies emerge, threats evolve, and attackers become stealthier to avoid detection. To become effective at detecting threats, you'll need to continuously expand your security toolbox. That's what makes the security field such an exciting one to be in. There's always something new to be learned. In this section, we'll continue our discussion on documentation by exploring the different types of documentation, the importance of effective documentation, and we'll finish off with a discussion on documentation tools. Documentation is any form of recorded content that is used for a specific purpose. This can be audio, digital, or handwritten instructions, and even videos. There is no set industry standard for documentation, so many organizations set their own documentation practices. Regardless, documentation is meant to provide instruction and guidance on a specific topic. There are also many types of documentation, and you may already be familiar with some of them from the previous lessons. These include playbooks, incident handlers journals, policies, plans, and final reports. Remember, there isn't an industry standard for documentation, which means that one organization's documentation practices may look completely different than another's. Often, organizations will tailor their documentation practices according to their needs and legal requirements. They may add, remove, or even merge documentation types. Have you ever purchased a product and didn't know how to use it, and consulted the product manual for instructions on how to do something like turn it on? Congrats, you've used documentation to solve an issue. Previously, you've learned about how playbooks keep business operations safe, and in incident response, playbooks work similar to a product manual. 
As a refresher, a playbook is a manual that provides details about any operational action. You'll learn more about playbooks later. Let's revisit that product manual example. Have you ever consulted a product manual for help and found yourself confused with the instructions and unable to get the help you needed? Whether it's had to do with unclear visuals and instructions or a confusing layout, you weren't able to use the documentation to solve your issue. This is an example of ineffective documentation. Effective documentation reduces uncertainty and confusion. This is critical during a security incident when tensions are high and urgent response is required. As a security professional, you'll be using and creating documentation regularly. It's essential that the documentation you use and produce is clear, consistent, and accurate so that you and your team can respond swiftly and decisively. Word processors are a common way to document. Some popular tools to use are Google Docs, OneNote, Evernote, and Notepad++. Ticketing systems like JIRA can also be used to document and track incidents. Lastly, Google Sheets, audio recorders, cameras, and handwritten notes are also tools you can use to document. Our discussion on documentation has only just begun. Soon, you'll use your incident handler's journal to put your documentation skills to work. We'll introduce you to intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. Imagine that you have just installed a home intrusion security system. You've installed intruder sensors for each entry and exit point in your home, including doors and windows. Those sensors work by sending out sound waves, and when an object touches a sound wave, the waves bounce back to your sensor and trigger an alert to your phone, notifying you that an intrusion was detected. An intrusion detection system, or IDS, works in a very similar way to home intrusion sensors. An intrusion detection system is an application that monitors system and network activity and produces alerts on possible intrusions. Like the home intrusion sensor, IDS collects and analyzes system information for abnormal activities. If something unusual is detected, the IDS sends out an alert to appropriate channels and personnel. Now, imagine a jewelry storefront with a window sensor. When the sensor detects that the window's glass has been shattered, it triggers a steel roll-up door to automatically replace the shattered window and prevent unauthorized entry into the store. This is what an intrusion prevention system does. Intrusion prevention systems, or IPS, have all the same capabilities as an IDS, but they can do more. They monitor system activity for intrusions and take action to stop it. Many tools have the ability to perform the function of both IDS and IPS. Some popular tools are Snort, Zeek, Kismet, Sagan, and Suricata. We will be exploring Suricata in upcoming lessons. You might be wondering, where do these alert notifications go? Well, coming up, we'll discuss how to manage alerts using security information and event management tools. Our discussion on detection tools may have left you wondering where alerts are sent and how alerts are accessed by security analysts. This is where security information and event management, or SIM, tools are used. SIM is a tool that collects and analyzes log data to monitor critical activities in an organization. SIM provides security professionals with a high-level overview of what goes on in their networks. How exactly does it do this? Let's use an example of a car. Cars have many different parts tires, lights, and let's not forget all the internal machinery that's under the hood. There are many different components of a car, but how do you know if one of them has an issue? Aha, you guessed it, the dashboard warning lights. The dashboard notifies you about information related to the car's components, whether the tire pressure or battery voltage is low, you need to refuel, or a door hasn't been properly closed. A car's dashboard notifies you about the status of the car's components so that you can take action to fix it. SIM tools work in a similar way. Just like cars have many different components, a network can have thousands of different devices and systems which make monitoring them quite the challenge. A car's dashboard gives the driver a clear picture of the status of their car so they don't have to worry about inspecting each component themselves. Similarly, a SIM looks at data flows between all the different systems in a network and analyzes them to provide a real-time picture of any potential threats to the network. It does this by ingesting massive amounts of data and categorizes this data so that it's easily accessible through a centralized platform similar to a car's dashboard. Here's what the process looks like. First, SIM tools collect and aggregate data. 
This data is typically in the form of logs, which are basically a record of all the events that happen on a given source. Data can come from multiple sources, such as IDS or IPS, databases, firewalls, applications, and more. After all this data gets collected, it gets aggregated. Aggregation simply means all this data from different data sources gets centralized in one place. Depending on the number of data sources a SIM collects from, a huge volume of raw, unedited data can get collected. And not all data that's collected by a SIM is relevant for security analysis purposes. Next, SIM tools normalize data. Normalization takes the raw data that the SIM has collected and cleans it up by removing non-essential attributes so that only what's relevant is included. Data normalization also creates consistency in log records, which is helpful when you're searching for specific log information during incident investigation. Finally, the normalized data gets analyzed according to configured rules. SIM analyzes the normalized data against a rule set to detect any possible security incidents, which then get categorized or reported as alerts for security analysts to review. Now that you've explored the capabilities of SIM tools, let's examine another security management tool. Security Orchestration, Automation, and Response, or SOAR, is a collection of applications, tools, and workflows that uses automation to respond to security events. While SIM tools collect, analyze, and report on security events for security analysts to review, SOAR automates analysis and response to security events and incidents. SOAR can also be used to track and manage cases. Multiple incidents can form a case, and SOAR offers a way to view all of these incidents in one centralized place. Well, there you have it. You've learned how incident management tools like SIM and SOAR make it easier for security analysts to see what's happening in a network and to respond to any threats efficiently.